What's up, everybody? Welcome to some Hazard Beat Sticks. Hope you're ready to get in that red zone. Send some burn spells up top. Ooh, we're playing against Alicia, man. Sounds pretty good. Always enjoy playing against her. As far as our opening hand goes, we do have the Keldon with Rogue's Passage, Seagate Oracle. I mean, Seagate Wreckage. Um, let's see. Do we want to keep... We do have Braids of Fire. Yeah, we do need double red, but um, yeah, I'm thinking we'll go ahead and keep on this one. I like this. Yeah, let's go and keep. We'll make it work, hopefully. You too, man. Get the chat all closed out, and then I'll kind of cover what we got going on commander-wise in just a second. So there we go. Okay, let's get the uh, get the Keldon down, and then let's go ahead and pass the turn. We are playing Hazaret, the Beat Sticks. Indestructible Haste. Hazaret can't attack unless you have one or fewer cards in your hand. Then for three mana, discard a card. Hazaret deals two damage to each opponent. Playing gets Alicia, who smiles at the thought of death. Uh, first strike, whenever she attacks, you may pay uh, two mana, uh, white or black, or any combination. If you do, return target creature card with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped in attacking. So, nice little aggro reanimator. Pretty cool commander. Yeah, I've always, I haven't built her yet, but um, she's definitely on my short list to build because uh, she just seems like a fun commander. Okay, opponent searches up a Blood Crypt. See, we're going to get down for the second seat we draw into. Ignorant Bliss. Um, let's go ahead and go for the... Let's get the Rogue's Passage down. And then, do we want to go Ankh? Or we can go Braid of Fire. We don't really have much to take advantage of with Braid of Fire at this point, but if we get it down, we're going to get into spots where we're going to kind of get that red man up and running. Or we do have Ignorant Bliss to hopefully kind of draw into another red source. Let's go ahead and... Let's go for Ankh. You know, especially if they're making their land drops... Um, Sorry about that. Excuse me, I had a little bit of a cough. Um, you know, if they're going to be making their land drops with a bunch of fetch lands, I, we're going to be able to outrace them. Um, you know, we're going to be getting two damage coming in whenever we put a uh, land onto the battlefield. But at least uh, we have a lot of monocolor lands. We're not have a, we don't basically have zero uh, fetch lands in the deck, so that'll be kind of a way for us to hopefully to kind of outrace them. Uh, but next time we're looking at getting down the Seagate Wreckage. Um, we'll probably go ahead and go for the uh, Braid of Fire. Ooh, yes, Blood Artist. What's up, buddy? Long time no see, man. Uh, all right, we draw into another red source. Uh, let's go ahead and get the mountain down. Let's go ahead and we're going to get two damage up top. Let's go ahead and go for the Berserker. We're going to be able to get him for haste, and I'm A-OK -okay with trading with Blood Artists on this one. So if they want to, um, they can trade. If not, we're going to have a renowned uh, Scab Clan. She do be known. Known across the land, man. All right, so we get that renowned trigger on there. So now with that renowned trigger, I'll kind of cover that. And anything else we need to do now, we're going to go ahead and pass the turn. Made the lane drop, yeah. Uh, so with that Renown trigger, basically whenever our opponent's going to cast a non-creature spell, uh, Scab Clan uh, Berserker's going to deal two damage to that player. So kind of gets us into spots where they're making their land drops, we're looking at two damage coming up. To, so it's kind of like a Punishing Burn style deck. So if they cast a non-creature spell, we're looking at two damage being dealt up top. We have the Ankh down, so every time they play a land, it's going to be two damage. And then we're also getting into spots where we can get down Hezzeret. And uh, if we go for Hezzeret, uh, we can also go for Ignorant Bliss the following turn to exile our hand, and then get into a spot to where we can uh, swing in for a 5 4 indestructible. And we may end up seeing a chump block on the Blood Artist if we do that. Oh, we got Blood Artist swinging in the red zone, man. <laughs> I do that too sometimes. If they're not going to block, I'll just swing in. Um, yeah, Blood Artist, man. He loves to uh, come in hot sometimes. Uh, let's go to get the Seagate Wreckage down. Um, two damage up top. Anything else we're going to go for? We can go for the Braids, Braid of Fire. Or do you want to go for Hazard? Let's go for Hazard. Let's go and swing in for three. It's going to drop him down to 18. And we'll get Hezzeret down. That way, next turn, we do have the Ignorant Bl Bliss play. And we can also get the, also get the uh, Braid of Fire down and kind of exile our hand. That way, we'll have a free board to swing in with Hezzeret. Okay, let's go and do that. Let's get Hezzeret down. So we're looking at red. Anything else? No, we're going to go and pass turn. But yeah, so we've got a bunch of burn spells in here. Uh, some of the other cards that we're running in here are a bunch of discard outlets. So we have stuff like Nahiri's Wrath. As an additional cost to cast at discard X cards. Uh, Nahiri's Wrath uh, deals damage equal to the total converted mana cost of the discarded cards up to... Uh, up to each of up to X target creatures and or planeswalkers. So most of the time when we were playing Hezard, it's kind of weird to build Hezard in that you're trying to get rid of your hand as quick as you can so you can get Hezard up and running, coming in hot. Oh, we've got the uh, Dragon Speaker coming in. Uh, coming in for four. That's going to push it down to 22. Yeah, we can get around that. Um, but yeah, so you're looking to get into a spot to where, oh, that was the minus three deal, four damage target creature. Okay, fair enough. Now, if they do play a land, I think we might be able to get into a spot to where we can redirect that damage over there. All right, we'll see. We also do have the uh, Hezard activation to redirect it over to Sarkhan, so we may end up going for that, actually. Drawn to a mountain. Uh, let's go ahead and get the mountain down. It's going to be two damage to us. Yeah, we can actually get into spots where we go. Activate Hezard. Let's go ahead and discard a card. Let's chunk the, um, I think at this point. 
Yeah, we might get into spots where we kind of want a prophetic flame speaker on the battlefield. Let's go and chunk the braid of fire right now. Yeah, let's go and do that. Let's chunk that. That's going to go to the graveyard. That's going to be two damage to each opponent. We can redirect that over to Sarkhan. Yep, there we go. And then we do have the Ignorant Bliss to turn um, Hazard online. So we're going to exile our hand. Um, we're going to get another card. Let's go and swing in hot. We might see a Blood Artist block on this one, potentially. Um, that's going to put him down to 10. It's going to be five total commander damage. But we may not. Okay, puts him down to 10. Anything else? No, we're going to go and pass turn. And then we're going to get our hand at the end of our turn. So you can run stuff like Ignorant Bliss, which is really cool, because it turns on Hezzard and also draws you another card. So, And we did draw into Smash to Smithereens. So we're looking at casting Smash to Smithereens. That's going to be 3 damage up top, put him down to 7. If they make the land drop, it's going to put him down to 5. And then we have the activation from Hezzard, uh, which is going to be put him down to 3. And then if we need to, we can go into Hiri's Wrath, uh, taking care of Blood Artist or any other creatures that get on the battlefield, because we've got some nice little spread in the hand. But uh, but yeah, so when you're playing Hazard, it's all about just trying to get get into this board state to where it's almost painful for your opponent to do anything. So, And I've enjoyed it. <laughs> it's been pretty fun. I don't play a lot of Burn in uh, in, in Magic in general at all. Uh, my first little kind of dip into uh, Burn was with um, it was the Naya Zoo, like Revolt Zoo deck. And oh man felt good. I've always been a combo or a uh, control player or a mid-range player and to go aggro, like combo burn, I'm not aggro combo, well, you know Revolt Zoo is a little bit of a, it's more synergy I would call it that, but um, but yeah man, felt good <laughs> I understand why burn players like playing Naya Burn to where they can just uh, complete a game in 5 minutes and then they have like 30 minutes left in the round to go do whatever they need to Okay, so we've got the Vindicate uh, taking care of the Aang, fair enough uh, We're still in a spot to where we can still activate Hezzerit come in hot if we want to, and they are shocking down to 8, which is going to be enough, so we're looking at smash to, excuse me, smash to smithereens, uh, which is going to take care of the worn power stone, 3 damage up top, we will probably see a blood artist block on this one, I doubt blood artist is going to come into the red zone, <laughs> but it feels good man, you got to let blood artist swing in sometimes, you got to do that, okay, draw to blood mist, okay, so if we go for blood mist, target creature is going to get double strike, so the first strike is going to take care of Blood Artist, but we don't have enough to go for the Smash to, smash to Smithereens. But, two damage up top, it's going to put him down to six. Gonna do a little bit of, let's chill out for a second. So we can do Nahiri's Wrath, chunking the Blood Mist, take care of Blood Artist. They're going to gain one life off of that, though. Let's go ahead and... If we go double strike, that really kind of puts us on a spot next. Yeah, let's go double strike. I think I like that. It forces the blood artist block, and then them swinging in next turn. They only have two cards in hand. Yeah, let's go and go for that. I like the blood, not blood artist, the uh, blood mist play. Let's go for that. Let's get down blood mist. Or we're going to give Hazard double strike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love this card, man. Look at that card art. That dude looks crazy. All right, let's go and swing. I don't know. I just love it, dude. Definitely captures the blood mist. Okay. So oh, excuse me. Okay, I got a little ahead of myself right there. I do apologize. Sometimes I get wrapped up in commentary and I forget that we did not have the active Hezerit trigger right there. Okay, so next turn, we're looking at Nahiri's Wrath, discarding a bunch of cards, and then we're going to rally from there. Sorry. Hey. <laughs> if you're new to this channel, sometimes uh, I like to give commentary. I like to, I like to kind of talk. I like to fill the spaces in a game with, uh, with commentary. I like talking about stuff, but... Uh, Sometimes I get wrapped up and I forget about the game state, which is really important. So, misplay on my part. So, but we can still get the blood, the uh, the blood mist down. That's going to give us double strike. It puts us in a spot where we can go into Hiri's Wrath the following turn if we have the land drop, take care of blood artists, whatever creatures are out there with the uh, five red mana cost, and then we can uh, kind of rally from there. We'll see what they're searching up for. They're going for a vampiric tutor that will be two damage off the vampiric tutor, which puts them down to six. So, <laughs> but yeah, man, hey. I'm human. <laughs> I know you're sitting there like, he's not going to be able to swing in once you get blood missed down, but uh, hey, it's a happy little commander mistake. That's all that is. Okay, so our opponent's tapping two on the Worn Power Stone. Yeah, I don't feel good about that one. That happens, though. So. Okay, and they got Ashnod's Altar with one card in the hand. So we do have Smash the Smooth Marines. We're going to go over to Hiri's Wrath. That'll be Double Strike. I think we're going to go ahead and go for that. So let's go into Hiri's Wrath. We're going to choose Blood Artist. We're looking at two remaining. Yeah, we're okay with that. Let's go ahead and go for, and that still leaves up Smash to Smithereen, so let's go ahead and go for, actually, we need to make sure we discard a bunch of cards. So we're looking at choosing Blood Artist, okay. We're looking at paying three, and we're going to discard the Grafted Skull Clap, uh, Cap, the Prophetic Flame Speaker, and that also leaves up um, one for Smash, yeah, there we go, okay. 
<laughs> so, poor Blood Artist is getting blasted for 7. It's going to send our opponent up to 7. But we're going to double strike off the Blood Mist, which is going to be able to uh, allow us to kind of close it out. Now, if they have some sort of uh, exile effect, we do have Smash to Smithereens, so kind of a little bit of a uh, backup thing to kind of get a few more damage in. But let's go and swing in. Now we have the active Blood Mist. <laughs> Alright, let's see if our opponent has any sort of... That one card could be a... Uh, but the only thing would be Path to Exile or something. Good game. Okay. Opponent throws the good game up. Let's go ahead and swing in. Coming in hot. That's going to be five first strike. And then we're going to get five on the back end. Off the regular damage. There we go. Close it out with Hezzard, Beat Sticks. Yeah, sorry about that Blood Mist line earlier. I just get wrapped up in commentary sometimes. So, all right, everybody. If you enjoyed the Hezzard Beat Stick, be sure, you, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. All right, bye.